You know, let's talk the way about people. hair. <laughs> let's talk about complexion, and let's talk about mm. beauty. Let's talk about it because I, th I, I, I think it's a, what, what's amazing about this conversation is that is is that is that we can't fit, we it, it, we can't so fit it in so much. But what's amazing is that we're having the same craziness mm. yes. in African-American homes yep. that Absolutely. you're having in Afro-Latino homes. Yes. And it goes back to what American you said. Problem. When you're colonized, mm -hmm. you're, everybody's colonized. But let me ask you this. Mm. When, when, when in your culture and in your family, um, as a man, mm -hmm. what were you steered to think was the beautiful? What was a beautiful woman? Uh, Dana Plato on Different Strokes. Ooh. Blair Warner on Facts of Life. Mm. And uh, Oh, uh, this one girl I liked on Punky Brewster. Which means that that was my idea of beauty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So crazy. Now, 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 so folks are young, so they don't know. I know. That's why I said that's so why you guys could Google that, look that yeah. up. Trust me, they're not black. Describe them. Describe them. I see them. the phones popping up. These are women of Caucasian descent, mm -hmm. okay, that are white, uh, that are in the age between 16 to 25, because I was a preteen, mm -hmm. and it was what I thought was the epitome. Listen, you got two, there was a show called Different Strokes. It was two kids, two boys, mm -hmm. living in... A, up to, up, uh, living in, uh, in Manhattan, Park Avenue, let's say. Got it. Who doesn't want to do that as a kid? Got it. Okay? So I remember walking into my father's room, and I wanted to change my last name to Drummond. You're not going to know what that means. <laughs> what that means is <laughs> that the, the character search. on the show, different show, last name was Willis Drummond. I wanted to change my name. I wanted to be a Drummond. Why? Because that means I was rich and I was white, and I had in the school I went to was an all-white school. Mm -hmm. my father put just, just hold on one second. Because because there's a there's a certain sadness that comes over me. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying, and I feel it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a certain deliberate sadness when 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 you realize how much more we could be, mm -hmm. and how much more we could accomplish if we didn't have to fight on both sides of our lives, fighting Absolutely. fighting in our homes to be fight. who we are, it's and fighting fight. out the house. I mean, it, it's just, and I, I'm gonna let you finish, but, yeah, yeah. But, but there's no way I could not stop and just honor. No, no, you know Thank that you. Because, because you were a kid. Absolutely. Made to feel horrible about who he was. And my father worked so hard to get me inside that co-op apartment and send me to Riverdale, New York to go to this school. Mm -hmm. He busted his ass only so I could come out and say, I want to be white at nine years old. My, mm. my. Mm. God, So it's how amazing. do you think that father feels? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He stood up over me. He was so upset. But he was, I thought he was mad at me. And he sent me to my room. But later on, I found he was mad at himself. Mm. Because he was perpetuating a bit of a lie himself, too. We are victims of a victim-type society. You understand? Yeah, yeah. You got to understand where we all come from. You understand? I mean, we come from... From, from a lot of mental illness in the sense of, 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 of slavery, of rape, yeah. of beating, and all this. I mean, yeah. what do you expect people to be in this type of world? And then they still put a little Kool-Aid in that nice clean cup of water. They still adding a little something to change it, to make my father and me not respect my father, or me think my mother shouldn't be respected. I had to stop watching Disney shows when I was a kid because they weren't respecting the father in the household. Men my father didn't let me watch Three's Company. It's an old show. You ain't gonna know what that is. <laughs> because it was two men that was per per perpetuating that these were, this was this excess mm. of beauty yeah. and everything. Yeah. So I say all that to say, not to throw it off, is that it was hard growing up being a young man, yeah. a young Afro-Latino man. I was eating foods that I was eating platanos with cheese and all kinds of those con pollo. I mean, I mean that's yeah, what we did. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And I have my friends. Now when I go around the block and, with my Puerto Rican friends and everything, and I'll hang out with them, they ain't got nothing against me. But when we got older, they were like, "Yo, why are you not hanging with the other kids? You know, why are you over so here let, listening let me, to this music me, and doing that?" My children, let, let, let me jump in because I want to take the conversation deeper. Sure. All right, because we we've had it we've had it at the level that I think anybody in your experience, might be able to sort of identify. Right. Mm -hmm. But I want to go deeper in this sense because each of you represents something quite fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. And that is you live between two worlds. Mm -hmm. In fact, you live between three worlds. Mm -hmm. and, you only have, and, and you only have two legs. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about what it, what it does to the soul to, to live between three worlds. Um, I can say personally, I, I was born on, on the island and coming here and not speaking any English. Um, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles. Mm. Everyone was Mexican. There were no Puerto Ricans at my school. Mm -hmm. And there sure, there surely, if there was, she was probably a blonde, blue-eyed one because I didn't see one mm. anywhere. Um, so my experience was being told 
very young, you know, my father had this, everyone in my family, on my dad's side especially, was very aware of anti-blackness. And um, that all started, you know, back to my grandfather, who was the only one of the kids that was the dark one, because his mother, I guess, like, as a family legend says, it was told to marry white. So he was the one that was treated like the servant of his brothers. And so we, he in turn raised his kids hmm. to be proud, to not mix with white. We had the opposite, it had the opposite effect of like, no, we're here. So I grew up knowing that white women were gonna try to look like us. And I was told that, that they were gonna get perms that made their hair smell to have my curls, that they were gonna put things in their bodies to have the shape of my aunties, and that they were trying to be us while trying to get us to hate ourselves. I knew that a long time but, ago. But here's the thing, though. I, 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 mm -hmm. when, I, when I cut you off, I'm not being rude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, you've said something that just makes me have to honor, honor or either push what you said. Because, because I, want, I, want, I, want to, I want to push you, mm. all right? Because I, I, you obviously grew up in a, in a context and family of resistance and pride. Yes. But even in those contexts, mm -hmm. there's always something that racism does to you. Oh, yeah. I was about to get into it. When, when, I, when I came here, though, because see, on the island, it's all fun and games, and we're all like looking like this panel, and we could kind of be like, oh, I have an uncle like so cute. Yeah, yeah. Once we got here, and I was playing with the Mexican girls, they told me I couldn't play with them because I should play with the black girls. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't speak any English, mm -hmm. so that was difficult. And the black girls were like, well, you, you're Mexican, you have to hang out with them. <laughs> now they were very Catholic, I wasn't Catholic. And so I started to ask myself, what are the answers to who I am? How did you feel? And how, I felt very, I felt like, to be honest, I was always really cocky about knowing that they didn't know what was going on. I felt like they were lost because they seemed like very following type people. That they were, that they were telling. How did you feel? I felt <laughs> like I wanted to go back home. I felt like I, under, that, you know what I felt? I felt what I can now articulate is that I was expected to live to a white standard. Mm -hmm. Whether that's beauty. Stop for a second. Mm -hmm. How did it make you feel? It made me feel, okay, let me. It made me feel alone. Mm. It made me feel um, even more resistant. It made mm. me angry, that's mm. for sure. Mm. And, um, it made me political before I knew what that meant. Stop for, first, honor mm -hmm. that, because that's mm -hmm. important. Um, just stop for a second, because yeah. I, I, want, I, I want to ask you a similar question, and you, and you as well. Mm -hmm. Because again, I, I, it's important that we articulate to ourselves and to the world mm -hmm. right, what this nation does to the soul. Oh, I'll uh, tell you. So here is, is um, she could really be my cousin. Mm -hmm. um, we got the same are. last name, so we come from the same tribe, but yeah. um, and colonizer. Mm -hmm. So my uh, my grandmother was a black Don't you woman. Just love her. <laughs> got to. <laughs> I, mean, I know. I, listen, I, I have my grandmother was a black woman that came mm -hmm. to America in, during the civil rights movement without speaking English or knowing how to read. She was hosed in um, the civil rights movement. Dogs. Uh, sicked on her in uh, in the Northeast because she migrated to Connecticut of all places, and then mm -hmm. um, eventually worked her way down to the South because of all of the violence that she endured. Mm -hmm. I have an uncle. My mother is white. My mother is a white Puerto Rican woman. My father is a, a black indigenous Dominican man. My mother's brothers. I, I sent pictures. My my uncle was black, a black man, and you would never think he was Puerto Rican. And two of the brothers were, uh, that they looked more uh, like light-skinned black, they looked like the barges, mm -hmm. <laughs> two mm -hmm. light-skinned black dudes. Mm -hmm. Then one was like pale, 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 because we have code words for our black people in Spanish. Mm -hmm. We call them habao, which means light-skinned with like curly hair. Anything not to say black, right? We got all these, these terms. So you talk about a little girl that, was, that grew up between Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and Cubans, and there's a hierarchy based on a European beauty standard. They're mm. definitely. Right? So they're, they're, this is the truth. What does that do to you? It, it, it messes you up because now I'm around black people thinking I'm, I'm the standard of beauty. I'm cute. They looking at me and saying, I look like Jane Kennedy, right? This is, this right. is the stuff they telling yeah, me yeah, to make, you. to boost me up about this. And then I get around these Cubans and they're like, 
you got a little too much black blood, you're not good enough for a Cuban boy. What mm. it does, it is, it messes with your self-esteem. Mm. You start seeking, it hurts. It mm. hurts like everybody else. You start trying to find yourself in the wrong places, in the wrong things. You draw your self-esteem from things that are not real, yeah. like being light-skinned and yeah. having good yeah. hair. Yeah. And that kind of stuff is not character building. And what it does to you is it sends you out into the world with mm -hmm. this false sense of security that can be crumbled at any moment when the wrong mouth comes to you and says, you ain't nothing because you this. Mm -hmm. So I had a battle with a racist Cuban stepfather and my black, mm -hmm. proud, black Puerto Rican grandmother who told me one thing that shifted my paradigm. She said, melanin is magic mm -hmm. and it is divine. And don't you ever let somebody try to trick you into hating it. Because if it wasn't divine, they wouldn't come for it. Mm -hmm. Right, that's it. That's very much that's it. Michelle, can I, I want to do something. Can I'm, 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 I ask this really quickly uh, 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 Do you know, speaking to your point, did you ever hear the term mancha de plátano? Oh, because we, so that, I just wanted... Mancha de plátano. What, yeah, what, what is yeah. that? Come, well, they, it's a plantain stain. Yeah. Like, like you, I guess if we had to translate it to something from the United States, it would be like the cotton stain. So what yeah. they would do with newborn babies is they would do this the and color. see the separation line on the ankle. Mm. of that brown to indicate that you had black blood, that line that separates mm -hmm. the yeah, white yeah. part of your hand to the other side. So I was just thinking, when no, you said that, I was just I thinking mancha de plata. Oh, yeah. Let's, 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 you were let's, talking let's, let's and turn your ankle and check. I want, I, want, I want to change gears because, mm -hmm. again, a, a part of what I want my audience to do tonight is not just to meander in the conflict and the problem, mm -hmm. but to understand how, how, has, how has this complexity mm. served to a greater a larger and a deeper purpose, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I wanna do it a particular way. Just follow me with this, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm gonna give you this phrase, all right? And, and it's simply, I am, right? Mm -hmm. And I want you to repeat the phrase, I am, mm -hmm. and add at the end of it all the things that you perceive yourself to be. Trust me. Okay. I am. Strong, powerful, good looking. Say I am each time. I am strong, I am powerful, I am good looking. I'm powerful, I'm strong, I'm good looking. I'm powerful and I'm strong and I'm good looking and I'm smart. I'm a powerful, mm -hmm. smart, strong, good looking man. Yes, and that's it. Mm -hmm. hey, that's where it holds for me all day. Ida, will you do this one for me? I am not. I am not your house slave. Mm. I am <laughs> not less than. <laughs> I am not. Um, Yo, Negro. <laughs> and I, like I live in that. I have to tell people all Because I hate when people say, you so light, you light skin, you not like them. Yes, I yeah, am. I hate that. Mm. Yes, I, I am. I that. am them. Give and me some more. I am not. I am not uh, stupid. I am not dumb. I am not ignorant. I am not angry. I am not um, a stereotype. Mm. I am not your fantasy. Mm. I am not your fetish. Fetish, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm about to throw my shoe at you. Mm -hmm. I got something to ask you now. I can't. Give me some more. Oh, strap, so I can't. I'm gonna stay right here. Give, give me some more. I am not. Just a couple um, more. And I'll, oh, I'll leave it. What are the things they, they say about us? I am not fiery. Oh, yeah. I am not feisty. Spicy. I am not um, attitude. <laughs> attitudinal. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. I am not. I tell you what I am. I am a queen. My name is Ida. That is the Egyptian queens when Egypt was a matriarch. And I know who I am. And I will never, ever again let somebody else tell me what I am and That's what right. I am not. That's right. Ever. Amen. Ever. Ever. Idalia. Yes. I am. I am a goddess ordained. I am talented. I am terrestrial. Mm -hmm. I am blessed mm -hmm. and protected. I am an original person. Mm -hmm. I am a friend, I am a unifier, I am a seer of my people, a guider of my people. Mm. I am mm. a love being. Um, I am a sister, I am a daughter. I am, I am so much hope for mm. people that I've never even met. 